Shalom. Welcome back to our Immersion Podcast class. Today we're starting on Exodus chapter 25. So that's pretty exciting. You guys are, are past the halfway point on Exodus. So soon you'll be able to say you've read through all the Hebrew assistant of Exodus. So Baruch Hashem for that. You should congratulate yourselves on your progress. Uh, even if you're just joining us now in the middle of the book, that's also fine. So it is an immersion class that's got directed learning. So you should be able to uh, appreciate as we go. So um, I'm pre-recording, not feeling so well. I'd like to have that. Uh, th no, it's okay. Nothing serious. Just some <laughs> coughing and phlegm and stuff like that. But um, I think I might even pre-record occasionally, maybe once a week or something. I kind of like the dynamic of being able to be there with you in the chat. And by the end of it, I have the whole teaching documented. It does take more time overall, right? Because I record in the beginning and then I go through it again with you, right? Instead of we're just going through it live. But uh, I think I'm going to do this from time to time. Some of you have given me some good feedback. I know some of you prefer the lie. Some of you, let's, let's mix it up a bit. So at least today I've got a good reason for it. Um, this is the first day of the Days of Awe, so I hope everybody, we're going through introspection, thinking how we'll improve ourselves this next year, thinking of how we fell short this last year, so we can be different people, right? Not just giving lip service to the Lord, but actually making forward progress in who we want to be, right? Okay, so let's get started. Actually, real quick prayer. Avi l'malkeinam wa l'imanachnu l'fanecha, ki anachnu yuchalim l'almod et dibrecha. Okay, here we go. So this is 25, okay. And it says, Vaidaber Adonai El Moshe Lemor. Then Adonai, Yedaber means he will speak or he is speaking, but the Vav conversive changes it to say, and he spoke, changes the aspect. Then Adonai spoke El unto Moshe, Moses, Lemol, saying. Verse 8, verse 2. Okay. Daber El Bene. Yisrael. Okay. Daber, this is from Diber, which is to speak. So Daber is an imperative. It's a command form of speak. So Hashem is saying to Moshe, Daber, speak. El, unto. B'nai Yisrael. And we should know this phrase already, but if you don't, it's from Banim, from Ben, right? Banim means children. You drop the Mem. And that means of. B'nai of is the children of Yisrael. And when you have a chain like this, something of something, if that last word is definite, it makes the whole chain definite. That means we need to use the word the in English. So what is definite? Definite means it either has the definite article on it, ha, that means the, or it has a suffix on the end of it, meaning it belongs to somebody like mine, his, hers, yours, etc. at the end. Or it's a name, right? And this is a name, Israel, right? So we have to say the, the B'nai, the children of Israel. The Yikhu. This is a weird one. This is the verb lakach, take. It's very common, so you've had this verb if you've been going through our Hebrew word of the day. But this guy's a little strange in that the Laman likes to disappear sometimes. So lakach becomes just kach, right? Like, if you read the Akedah with us yesterday, the Torah reading for Rosh Hashanah number two, what, is, what does it say? Hashem speaking to Avraham Avinu in Genesis 22, he says, kach na et bincha et yachidcha asher ahavta. Kach na, take now. It doesn't say lekach na, he says kach na, the lamed falls away, all right? Here it also falls away. This is not a normal pattern of verbs. It's just this guy. He's special. <laughs> but it's it's common enough that it's worth learning. Okay? <clears throat> so, yikahu, the yod, tells us it's third person. So that could be he or they, right? Could be a she, but she doesn't start with a yod. 
And then the U at the end is plural. So Y and the U, they tell us it's they. So Yikhu means they are taking from Lakach, or they will take. Okay? And the Vav here is not a Vav conversive. He doesn't change the time. The pointing is wrong. So Ve Yikhu means and, or indeed, they will take Li for me. A Teruma. Teruma means a tribute. A tribute. May 8, from, with, kol, every, ish, man. Asher, who, yidvenu libo. Yidvenu. So this one's a little bit easier to figure out than yikhu was. So you see the dagesh and the dalit? The dot and the dog, dalit? This is telling us that there's two dalits, right? It's doubled. And the reason is, there used to be a noon on this word. This is what we call a pay noon verb. Do you guys remember the model? We have three root letters usually. And in Hebrew diktuk, in Hebrew grammar, we call that pa'al, pay, I, and lamin, which means to do, right? It's kind of like a way of saying verb. The pay in pa'al, this is the first position in the verb. And we can say it's a pay whatever verb. A pay aleph verb is a verb that has an aleph in this position, okay? In this case, it's a pe nun verb because it starts with a nun, right? And the nun has assimilated into the dalit. So the verbal root is nadav, nadav, like nadav and avihu. You might already have been accustomed with a word that comes from this verb, nedava. Nedava is a free will offering. It's something you're not commanded to do. You just want to do it, right? Or a volative offering, sometimes that's called. So nadav... It, it, nadav also has some other interesting meanings in other languages. Like in, in Arabic, nadava is like, um, pardon me, naduva is to be excellent, right? Or capable. Willing, right? The willing is where we have the crossover with the Hebrew. So, uh, nadav is to be willing. Yindvenu is an equivalent. Sorry, I got summoned upstairs <laughs> to handle something. So you don't know, but that was about 15 minutes past. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oy. Ah, Yidavenu. Okay, so Nadav. Nadav is like to be willing, right? To be willing. So Yin became Yid. Yidavenu. Who? Asherhu Yidavenu is willing, who's willing, libo, his heart. So who his heart is willing, like willing to give, willing to volunteer, and willing to make a voluntary contribution, etc. Tik hu. So again, this is lakach, that weird verb lakach, the lamet is gone. See, no dagesh in the kof to tell you what happened. So the tav tells you it's you or it's she. But the U at the end tells us it's a plural, so it's y'all. Tik hu means y'all will take. You all will take. Et, we don't translate. Teruma ti. Teruma, we had over here. Teruma, tribute. But now the he went back to its ancient form, t, because we're putting a suffix on the end. So teruma is the tribute t of e, of me. Take my teruma or receive my teruma. Verse Gimel. Hope I don't have more interruptions. We can just <laughs> keep recording through here. Okay. Uh, I think I can make that a bit bigger. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. Yeah. There we go. And we're not in the graphic novel. Uh, there's just one picture of Moshe praying and a bunch of words. So, you know. I don't think it adds that much value. It's better to have the nice, crisp, annotated text with all the ta'amim and everything. All right, verse Gimel, which is three. Vezohot haterumaha asher tikhu meitam zahava chesev unechoshet. Vezot. Now this... Zot means this. If you remember, we had this. This, 
in our word of the day. Ze is the masculine and zot is the feminine. Now zot, this is ha teruma, the tribute. See, it's feminine. It ends in ah. That's why we have to use zot with it. It wouldn't be correct to say ze with a ze would be for something masculine, like ze, like ze eyes. This is the hairy he goat. <laughs> Vezot ha teruma. Now this is the tribute. Asher which tik hu y'all shall lakach tik hu y'all shall take me itam me itam from it with am them from with them like it's in their possession okay so these are things that qualify for proper teruma in this instance zahav we've had this word zahav means gold. Sorry, I was pointing the wrong place. <laughs> Looking, trying to look at the camera. <laughs> Zahav, vachesif, and kesif, silver. U and nechoshet, nechoshet. Remember nechoshet? We had this recently. Copper, C U, nechoshet, copper. Okay. Verse Dalit. Utechelet. Vargaman, the tol at shani, the sheish verzihim. Okay? By the way, please let me know in the comments how the volume is. We're cranking the volume now, and I'm trying to be aware of it to talk louder when possible. And I don't like the microphone when it's in view, so let me know if it sounds okay now, all right? I, recently we had some okays that it's okay, but I just want to make sure that everything is loud enough for everyone to hear. U means and. Techelet. Techelet. So techelet is an interesting thing. We oftentimes don't translate this color. I know if you check lexicons, they'll say, some will say violet. Some will say kind of like a, a deep indigo blue. Some will say another shade of blue. Um, the reason why I recommend not translating it, but just saying techelet, techelet, is because this is a special dye from a kind of sea snail that the color of the dye depends on the exposure of the item being dyed. Hold on, I'm sorry. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I pressed mute and it didn't mute. Sorry, this used microphone, it doesn't always mute properly. I apologize for that. Uh, all right. So if it's, if it's out in the sun when it dies, it's one color. If it's in the shade, it's a different color. So better just to say techelet, right? It's kosher, whatever the color is. Although people try to go for like the nice, rich, beautiful, bluish color. So, and techelet. Now, I'm, some years back, I was trying to find out, well, how should I really translate this? In the Yehoash Yiddish translation, they call it blau wool, right? So blue wool. Okay, maybe blue a blue fabric. Oi, the kitty showed up. Oh, you're usually so good, and now you're on the Hebrew Bible. Oh, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. He can't go there. He's a sweetie, but he doesn't like to be picked up. I don't know, maybe his belly hurts or something. Okay. You should go down, go down, go down. Go down, good boy. Good boy, good boy. All right. Oh, techelet. So, and... Blue wool, blue linen, blue... The idea is it's not just the dye, it's a material, yeah? The argaman and purple fabric. The tula'at shani. This means in crimson color. The sheish. Sheish is an Egyptian word. Sheish means a very fine alabaster-colored linen. The izim. Now, izim by itself just means like goats. Goats, he goats. Um, but the idea is more than likely it's the, the leather from the goats, right? Okay. I almost said any comments or questions, but you're not here right now. But actually, any comments or questions, I will try to be live when we have our premiere today. So hopefully, and I'm doing this way early, so it should be able to process the 4K and all that stuff. We shouldn't have any issues. Okay. Verse hey, that's five. How are we on time? Oh, wow, making quite some good progress. All right. The Arot Elim. Arot means leathers or skins of Elim. And Ayil 
is a a rim, right? And we have all kinds of interesting words that come from that, like fortitude and strength and stuff. So elim, the im is the plural, and you can tell it's an effective, right? There's no yod here. We would expect yod mem, but the Masoretes they knew what it was, so we'll read that chirik as a long one anyway because it should have had a yod elim. Meodamim. Meodamim means like ready, like made, what, ruddled with red, or I can't remember how they say that. They had something they rub on it and they make it red. Okay, so like redified, <laughs> rooted, I think maybe rooted. Anyway, the root is, you can see, Odam, it's like Edom, right? He's called Edom because he's so red, etc., etc., right? So the root is red. And it's possible that Dom is like the, uh, the actual. Uh, primary root there for blood. Who knows? Or blood might have come from Adam. Okay. The rot and skins of Techashim. Techashim. Now this is a word, Tachash. We don't know what Tachash means. Uh, people may claim to know what that means, but it just depends which lexicon you check. Right? And I believe me, when I went through and I learned all these words, um, I was really like, I really want to know what exactly does it say? You know, look, look, check out articles. and Okay, nobody really knows. Okay, The current scholarly opinion is that this is porpoise leather, right? So like a dolphin, really to, kind of like the dolphin from porpoise. Um, but if you check out older lexicons, I mean, the, it ranges from rock badger to unicorn. <laughs> uh, unicorn I'm getting from a midrash, right? So we have a midrash that says the tachash was an animal that was the last of its kind. And it had it, it was a terrestrial four-legged animal, a behemoth, right? Which usually can mean like a four-legged, uh, a quadruped, right? It, not always, but some of the nuances is a quadruped. So it was a behemoth, so a quadruped, and it had a single horn on its head. <laughs> The rabbinical text I looked at years ago, it doesn't call it unicorn, but it describes it this way. And so Hashem, like, teleported it in front of Moshe, and he said, okay, kill it and take its leather and use this on the Mishkan, right? Because the Mishkan has a has an outer leather of Tachash leather. So it might be unicorn. Uh, maybe we shouldn't popularize it because I think there's enough anti-Semitism out there already. We don't need them saying that we, we killed the last unicorn. <laughs> It's like, like uh, fascist propaganda against uh, for little kids against Jews or something. But anyway, that's it's like all kinds of opinions. What it is, um, so when you don't really know, it's best to express this in translation. Just taking the Hebrew word and anglicizing it, tachash leather. Right? It's not like a tachash leather. So in the arot, the leathers or the skins of techashim. Okay, the atse. This is from eitz, which is tree. Or wood, atzim are trees or woods, and then we drop the mem, so it means of atze, trees of or woods of, shitim, shitim, which is acacia, so acacia wood. These are all good teruma to give at that time. Voluntary contributions of the teruma for every heart that is willing. Okay. All right, verse. Vav, that's six. Shemen la mao besamim le shemen hamishcha veliktoret hasamim. Shemen. So shemen by itself means oil, and we can usually assume it's shemen zayat, olive oil, right? If the text doesn't specify something else. So or you can just leave it as oil. Shemen, oil, lama ol. Okay? So this root is a little bit hard to recognize. This is a he fill infinitive from the word aleph vav resh, ol. Ol means light. Okay? That's the sign for it, by the way, light. Okay? Like I guess a light bulb sending out its rays, light. Lama ol means for illumination. Okay? So shemen, lama ol, light. For ma'or, for illumination. By the way, this is where Rabbi Meir gets his name from, right? Or even the name Meir. It's like illuminator, right? So it sounds almost like a transformer or something. Illuminator, eject, eject, eject. 
freaking like shines the light bulb. <laughs> All right. Besamim are aromatic mixes, right? Like, you know, this is what is used by a perfumer in making perfume, right? And incense and such. So besamim, aromatic spices, something like that, right? So aromatic spices. Le shemen, for the oil. For which oil? Here comes the adjective. Le shemen, le for the shemen of hamishcha. So how do I know to say the oil? Because my eyes scanned ahead and I saw the ha there. So we have two words. Shemen, hamishcha, ha. Okay? They're connected. It's a construct. So it's oil of something. And because that last word has ha on it, the, that is one of the three ways to make a word definite. You put ha on it, it has a suffix on it, or it's a name, right? A proper noun. Ha mishcha. Mishcha, you probably recognize the root. Mashach. Mashach is to anoint or to smear. Mashach. This is where we get the word Mashiach, an anointed one, right? Which can translate as uh, a king, right? Or uh, it can be a, a priest is an anointed one, right? Especially a high priest. Or it can be the Messiah. And you just need to be aware that it has these different meanings in the Hebrew because what some of the counter missionaries will do trying to trick people to get them to come, uh, Noah hides, which is really a moralist system, what they'll do is they will they'll say, look, Mashiach means Messiah. And look over here. There's many Messiahs. There's a Mashiach there. And this prophecy talks about a Mashiach here. No. <laughs> this is such an errored way of trying to apply the meaning of a Hebrew word. What they're doing is they're taking a word that's got a few different meanings. They're taking the meaning they like, the Messiah. And then they're applying it to all the verses that talk about kings and priests and all that, right? They say, hey, many messiahs. So if you've ever heard that argument that there are many messiahs, you cannot do that. You can't take a Hebrew word and take one meaning you like and then retroactively go back into English and try to take the one meaning that it means sometimes in English and apply that backwards to all of the Hebrew meaning. It's not how languages work. It's deeply flawed. Uh, slash dishonest, okay? So don't let someone do that, pulling the wool over your eyes. Uh, usually usually these arguments are made by people who don't know Hebrew very well. And so they heard this thing and yeah, yeah, and they just really hate the Messiah and they're looking for some reason to run with it. But uh, anyway, it's invalid. It's absolutely invalid. I mean, imagine, you know, imagine like in English. Imagine if it was the reverse, right? You know, some, some uh, Hebrew speaker, was looking at something that was written, let's say in Shakespeare or whatever, or maybe not Shakespeare, just somebody else, some more modern poet. And in one place, the poet said, um, did you get thine groceries, right? Did you get the groceries, right? And then the person comes into Hebrew, but I'm just going to say it in English, okay? And says, oh, you know, well, get in English, it can mean like, like take, receive, it can mean understand, right? And let's say they go with the understand, oh, understand, understand. And then, so they got this instance of get the groceries, did you get what I'm telling you? <laughs> and did you get did you get caught, right? And then they take the meaning for the one that is understanding and they try to push that back in on the English. Mevin. They say, oh, it can mean Mevin in Hebrew. And so every single instance of get now means Mevin. You see the error? That's the, that's the error that's being made. So don't let anybody do that to you. All right. So le shemen for the oil, I have to say the because I have the over here, ha. Right? It's a construct chain. The oil of, right? Whenever you have of, that last word's definiteness propagates back to all of the words that are of, 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 of. You can have 20 of them, of, 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 of. If the last one is definite, it makes the whole chain definite. Okay? If I wanted to say, if I, if I didn't want to say the on everything, then instead of saying, putting in the construct, I would put le, right? Belonging to whatever instead. Then it would be like one of many. Okay? Le shemen hamishcha. The anointing oil. Okay, so this is an adjective, mishcha, and it's feminine because shemen is feminine, even though you can't tell. It doesn't really look like it. The and le for ketoret hasamim for making smoke. Literally, is what they're saying for the smokiness of the samim, the spices. Okay, so the incense spice. Right, ketoret samim. Usually, we say incense spice. Okay, but literally, it's saying making it smoky. You actually have specific commands to make something smoke towards a certain altar, right? Or from an altar. Make it smoke in that direction. All right. Wow, we're just 25 minutes in. <laughs> really cruising. I hope I'm not going too quickly. Hope it's okay. All right. 
Uh, I might stop after 30 minutes, or with, maybe with this next verse, just because the sheer amount of stuff that we're covering. Verse Zion, that's seven. Avnei Shoham, ve'avnei Miluim, la'ephod ve'lachoshen. Okay, Avnei, this is from the word, not Avner, <laughs> but Evan. Evan means stone. Okay? Avanim means stones. And what happens when we have an ending in im and we drop the mem? Avne, stones of. Okay? So stones of shoham. So shoham, it can, it's got different possible meanings. I think onyx is probably the best one. We go with onyx. So avne shoham with onyx stones or stones of onyx. The avne and stones of miluim. Miluim means like fitting, like affixing to the, to like fixtures, like affixing to the place where you want to put the stuff. Okay? Uh, let's see. La ephod for the ephod, ve la choshen. And for the choshen is the breastplate. Okay? Notice la ephod. It was ha ephod. The ephod, the ephod. And then the hay got kicked out by the lamed. The lamed doot, 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 came in, kicked him out, but the footprint remains. And the reason it's a comet's there, the, the vowel that looks like a T, is because it used to be flat, and we put the dagesh in the aleph. Remember, in ancient Hebrew, it was hal. Hal meant the. The lamed tried to go in. Aleph doesn't accept a dagesh. So it kicks it out, and we lengthen the short vowel, patach, the flat one, and we, we made it into long vowel comets, all right? And then similarly over here, la choshen, for the choshen, chet doesn't require extra lengthening. It just already, it's understood that it's the, okay? And la choshen, and for the choshen, okay? Oh, shoham, you know, uh, it can also mean cornelian, right? So there's, there's actually, it's kind of a little bit disputed, right? I think I learned originally that it was shoham from an older lexicon, that it was onyx, so sometimes these things stick with you. <laughs> All right, where are we on time? Uh, well, pretty good time. Should I, should we bang out another one? Oh, let's, let's see if there's questions. How about this? Maybe I'll... I'll pause for a second for Q&A. I'll get a drink while I'm waiting. Okay, so you should be typing your questions now. Ow! Oh boy, we got the kitty coming up again. <laughs> Deja vu. Hopefully, I answered your questions. Where's my recording time? Okay, maybe we should do one more verse. Okay, let's do verse chait. Ow! Chait. Ve'asuli mikdash. Asu li mikdash. Asu. It's from the Lamed Hay verb. Remember? Pa'ahu. Pe, I, and Lamed. So Lamed Hay means there's a Hay in the last position. And the Hay went away. This is an imperative. Uh, asu. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not imperative. Asu means they made. Ve asu means they will make. So they will make li for me. Mikdash. A sanctuary. Mikdash, from the word Kadosh, right? Remember Kadosh? Holy? Veshachanti betocham. Shachan, we've joked about this a few times before. Shakakan, Shakakan, everybody rock along, right? So, Shachan is where we get the word Shekhinah, the Shekhinah, the presence, which is not a biblical Hebrew word, a later Hebrew. Uh, medieval Hebrew, but it comes from this verb, shachan. Shachan is to inhabit or to dwell, right? A shokane is a neighbor, right? Shachan T, the T at the end makes you think of ani or anochi, I. So shachan T means I inhabited or I dwelled. Ve shachan T means and I will inhabit and I will dwell betocham. This is from the word tavich which means midst, and then toch means midst of, bait, in, toch, midst of, am, of them, the suffix them, 
All right. All right, that's exactly 30 minutes. I think that's pretty decent. Yeah, we did eight verses. <laughs> Something. Oh, but look. One more verse, and we're at the end of the Paracope. All right. We'll do the one more verse. <laughs> Kechol Asher Ani Mare Otra Eit Tavnit Hamishkan Ve Tavnit Kol Kelaiv Vechain Tasu. Okay. Ke Chol. Ke means like or as. Chol is all or everything. So like all or according to all. Asher, which, remember in the Hebrew word of the day, I had a witch up there, but not that kind of witch. It's like who or which. Sometimes it can mean when. It's the different W marks, right? Which, ani, I, mar, a. This is from the verb ra, a. This is a he, fill, active participle, if you care to know that, okay? So, ra, a is to see. This is to cause to see. So, which I caused to see. In other words, which I showed. <laughs> Otcha. This is you. We basically took et which is the D-D-O, and we put the suffix cha on the end. Who did I show? Otcha, to you. Eight, and now we have another eight here. This is also from the same verb. It's It's got multiple objects. Eight, tavnit. Tavnit is like the design, the form. I think of like a 3D image that Hashem was showing to Moshe. Hamishkan, the tavnit, the design of Hamishkan, the tabernacle. And you'll notice, we had Shachan up here. He's going to Shachan with us in our midst. And look at this. Here's a noun from that. Remember I have taught you before that some nouns are formed by putting a mem in front of the verbal root? And this will either give you, like, the occupation of the thing the verb does, like one who does that, or something that assists the verb in doing its thing, right? So he's dwelled in Mishkan, a place of dwelling, right? Although we wouldn't call that a house or something. It's specific to Hashem's Shekhinah, right? So the shachanti betocham, I will shachan in your in their midst. According to everything which I have shown you, et tavnit, the design of hamishkan, and you actually look shin shin kaf kaf nun nun. If you're watching, you can see it's got the root right there. The mishkan, I like to call it the mishkan rather than saying tabernacle because otherwise you miss that shachan meaning of it, right? The eight and another object, tavnit, the design of kol kelaiv. Kol is all of its kelaiv, its instruments. Remember, kali can mean, it can mean like jewelry if it's on a woman. Uh, it can mean like uh, uh, kale milchama, instruments of war, like it'd be a sword, a bow and arrow, right? A sling, stuff that's used by a shield. It's the, it's the instrument of man, the, for the man of war, instrument of warfare. It can mean all kinds of things. It can mean, you know, the, the tools that are used by an artisan, right? Uh, a charas. So anyway... Very flexible word. The kelaiv and all of its utensils, probably utensils is here good, right? The golden forks and all that stuff. All of its utensils. The chain and such. Ta'asu. You shall all do. And then we are. We finished the pericope, ended with verse 9. Very nice. So I will end the video now. But I'll, if I'm if I'm present, <laughs> I'll stick around and answer your questions. If not, or if you're watching this later, please put your comments down below, your comments, your questions. Feel free to ask. And if you'd like to support this ministry, we, this is a full-time ministry, and uh, we are uh, over in the Philippines, <laughs> not, not the greatest economy over here. Uh, your contributions are greatly appreciated. The best way to contribute is uh, paypal.me, like me, 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 slash, Hebrew literacy, all one word. Or if you want to set up a recurring payment, you can go over to our um, uh, Patreon account, which is patreon.com slash Hebrew literacy. And for those who are monthly contributors, we are offering my um, what I've done so far in my teaching on Revelation, where we go through every Greek word and we reconstruct kind of the biblical Hebrew thought behind it. We look at midrashes and other Jewish apocalyptic literature and stuff. Um, I will be releasing the third video for that class this week. Uh, Bli neder. All right. Shalom, shalom. You guys have a great day.